So if you're just starting out with color grading, a thing that you probably know is if you go into your scopes and then go to your vector scope, and then click on the box that says show skin tone indicator. You then get a line that shows you where your skin should sit in the vector scope. So if that's true, then why does this underwater shot look weird when his skin is on the skin line, but more normal when it's off the skin line? And what's the deal with this whole skin tone indicator thing anyway? Nathan here. So today we're talking all about skin tones underwater. I've always wanted to shoot some underwater stuff. And fortunately on Problematic's latest music video, which you can check down in the description, just came out last week. We got to go into a pool, strap a case on a camera and stick that thing underwater for some nice drowning shots. And I figured that'd be a great opportunity to talk about the skin line on the vector scope and how it may not mean exactly what you think it means and how it's actually a little controversial. So anyway, enough of me yammering, let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16 and everything I'm gonna show today can be done in the free version of Resolve. So we just have a shot of Greg swimming underwater here, shot on a Sony a7 II in S-Log. And we just start off by adding some contrast to the image so we can kind of see what we're looking at here. So we're just gonna bump this sucker up a bit and then maybe play with our exposure controls, bring our gain down a little bit, make things just a little bit darker and kind of moodier. There, so now we can see the before and the after. Okay, great, we're definitely on our way. We're gonna add a new node with Alt S. And now we wanna check and see where that skin tone is sitting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my vector scope. I'm gonna go into my scopes, go down to vector scope here. And then to actually see what part of the image I'm looking at, I'm gonna go into my options and click on display qualifier focus. Then if we click our qualifier tool over here and we hover, over top of our image, we can see exactly where we're hitting. Now, everything's kind of in the middle here because it's not super saturated yet. So let's just bump this up kind of crazy just so we can push everything out a little bit and kind of see where we're sitting. Okay, that's great. So we're definitely somewhere around here-ish with the skin and that makes sense. It looks pretty green and green is in this direction. So we're gonna go in and enable our skin tone indicator as Resolve calls it. And it's actually at a 33 degree angle from this line right here. So it was actually originally designed as two lines called the I and Q components for NTSC broadcasting. Since moving forward to HD, it's actually kind of irrelevant, but then got picked up by Apple and called the I bar. And it just so turns out this particular line actually tends to be a fairly good indicator for where skin typically sits under white light conditions. However, that does not mean that the skin needs to sit along that line. So there's tons of different lighting conditions you can run to, in addition to the fact that the line was never actually intended to show you where your skin should sit exactly. It just kind of ended up becoming that as a general idea for a ballpark. So let's go back to our clip here. So just for fun, we're gonna get the skin on this line here. Now let's bring the saturation down a little bit because it looks a little bit ridiculous. Now our skin probably falls into the gamma range and we're just gonna bring that puppy up and we can go into our temperature controls. Yeah, so let's warm it up a little bit. Bring our tint up. Yeah, perfect. Our skin is definitely falling closer. And if we go along, yeah, we can see our skin is much closer to along that line. Maybe we can bring it a little over, bring our gain over a little bit. And we can also just add a new node with Alt S and just grab a little piece of skin, go into our highlight and check it out to see that we're definitely closer to the line here. Maybe we can bring things over a little bit, boom. Now we're pretty much bang on the lines. So we're gonna come out of our highlight and disable this node. Okay, perfect. So now we are along the skin line. Now, personally to me, this doesn't look right at all. And if you've ever been under the water, it actually doesn't look like that. And there's a reason. Have you ever wondered why water is blue? So to think about this, I like to think about rainbows and your classic Roy G. Biv. And at different wavelengths of light, you have different colors. And the color observed is what is reflected. So for example, I'm wearing a white shirt. That means everything is getting reflected. However, I have these black headphones and that means that everything is getting absorbed. Well, not everything. I mean, it's still bouncing back some light, but you get the general idea. However, if I take Yertle the turtle here, we got this blue. So that means everything is getting absorbed. 
except the color blue that's then getting reflected. And that's the same thing that's happening with water. So if we go back over to the vector scope, so you have your blue and violet over here that's getting reflected. So that means that on the other side of our color wheel, that these colors are going to be getting absorbed. It just so happens to be our red and our orange and our yellow, which is exactly where our skin tone falls. And if you've ever been underwater with a red bathing suit, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. That color starts to fade because red is getting absorbed. So if we think about that, then obviously having our skin on this skin tone indicator line, as it's called, may not actually be the best idea. So let's redo these changes. We're just gonna add a new node and push more into that blue green, which it's actually pretty close there. We can maybe increase our saturation a little bit and let's bring our gamma down a little bit. Yeah, and we can push our gamma kind of in that blue direction, maybe a little bit in our gain. But you know, just kind of find what works for you and using a color accurate monitor will definitely help you out. But again, it's all creative decisions. So it's whatever really works for you. My main point is to kind of get rid of this reliance of everything being on the skin tone line because that may not actually be the case. And just as a fun example, this technique is actually used in the film industry to make it look like someone is underwater. Check out this shot from Aquaman. So we have this super pixelated shot of Jason Momoa as Aquaman, but it's great because we have the before and the after for VFX. So he's just on a studio here, but then after all that VFX magic, he looks like he's underwater. So if we go in and grab our qualifier with our vector scope open, you can see in the before, he's kind of more along that orangey color, but if we go to the after, you can see that they pushed him more in the cyan direction, which is exactly opposite from red, because again, that's the first color to get absorbed underwater. Anyway, folks, I hope that helps you out when color grading your shots and trying to get your skin tones just right and maybe giving you the idea that you don't have to rely on every aspect of your tools because there's no 100% right way to do things. If you like this video, be sure to hit that button and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. I put out two Resolve tutorials a week, every Monday and Thursday. And if you didn't like the video, well, the dislike button is there too. So this was kind of a technical one. And anyway, let me know what you think of these types of videos. I'm definitely going to do more about skin tones, working with different colors and all these sorts of things you can kind of wrap your head around. So anyway, folks, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.